All right, we are back. It's adults class. My name is Bob Kamuna. I'm more you can call me Mr. Smooth. And today we are in Mr. Smooth's classroom. And like I said, we'll be talking about something really, really exclusive. Something that affects women and also affects the family. Most families are looking for and looking at having children. And the problem is they are doing everything possible to have kids and they are simply not coming. There are some women who are overlating all right and still not having children. What is the reason? And there are some, uh, as a result of number of abortions, a number of um, contraceptive pills, as a use of prolonged use of uh, emergency contraceptive pills, especially, let me mention one particular product's name, Prostonaut 2. It becomes a little difficult for the body to allow them to ovulate and also be able to have children. So what we have looked at last week was why you are not ovulating why you ovulate and still don't get pregnant that was what we looked at so we looked at um, blockages in the fallopian tubes and all the other issues that come with it if you really want all the lessons we did last like the entire class what we did last week it is on my youtube channel papa kwamina mr smooth papa kwamina mr smooth it's actually papa kwamina when you use the mr smooth it narrows the search so you can subscribe so that this evening's um, lessons will be, will, be, will, be put, will be posted tomorrow morning. So you can also have it and be able to watch and understand if you didn't. Now for those of you who, um, for those of you who uh, complain that I should speak a little bit of the fancy and stuff, I, I'm going to try because uh, it's, it's not easy to care about stuff like that using the local di dialect. But I'm going to do my best. Uh, forgive me though, but... That is, is, is something that we, we need to look at. All right, so we are heading into Mr. Smooth's classroom. Uh, and then, like I said, we'll be looking at reasons why you don't ovulate or signs that, signs that show that you are not ovulating. First of all, we need to look at a few things. There are three basic reasons or three basic contributing factors that will not make a woman ovulate. The first one is a problem with the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, I'll show you a picture of the hypothalamus, where it is located. And then the second reason is when you have a problem with your thyroid or pituitary gland. When you have a problem with the pituitary gland, you also have problems ovulating. And then also when you have problems with your ovaries. So I'm showing you where the hypothalamus is. So on my PowerPoint presentation, as we do, regularly i am going to uh highlight it for you to see so producer let's 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 go so you can see this area this area of the brain is what we call the hypothalamus it is responsible for menstruation and then we have this area which is called the pituitary gland it's also responsible for menstruation and this is a picture of the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland so this is how they actually look like if you're looking at it in the form of a picture this is how they, how they actually look like and then i am showing you the uterus so this area is the back of the uterus this line you have here is that of is that is the fallopian tube and then this white thing you have here is the ovary so you have the left ovary you have the right ovary and this is the fallopian tube so this is actually a live picture of the uterus so the uterus is up here this is the back of the uterus and it descends into the vagina and the entrance of the entrance into the uterus is what we call the cervix there's a small hole in the cervix called the ooze that is where the sperm passes into the fallopian tube and then to meet an egg for fertilization to take place so basically this is how it looks like if you're looking at taking a, a good picture of it if I look at it from, from, from that side. So we are saying that these three things are the main reasons why you will not ovulate. And the, each of them comes with a, a specific condition. And those specific conditions are what we're going to be looking at today. Very interesting, very educative. Like I keep saying, the adult class is the most educated adult show in this country because no show actually gets to teach you these things. I don't know any program even in africa that takes the the time to take you through 
all these these pro, uh, problems now when we are looking at the, the problems that happen there's there's a I mean when it comes to the uh, pituitary gland there's a hormone that a pituitary gland releases which is GnRH gonadotropin releasing hormone and then there's another FSH follicle stimulating hormone and there's another one LH luteinizing hormone now these three hormones are released by the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus and then it combines after these have been released like I, I did previously if you watched then estrogen and progesterone are also released and then you lay an egg and then you have your menstrual cycle so if these hormones are not released that is when you have PCOS polystatic ovarian syndrome and this is a condition where the egg cannot actually mature the egg that is coming from the ovaries cannot actually it's not maturing enough for you to ovulate and this semi of uh, what do you call it semi matured egg that is produced as that is uh, this semi matured eggs produce a lot of the male hormone called testosterone and other male hormones now these male hormones give a feedback to the pituitary gland and that is actually the area that controls your menstrual cycle and creates some sort of confusion in the pituitary gland and then it prevents your ovaries from laying the eggs the confusion that is set up in the pituitary gland itself makes or sends wrong hormonal signals and it uh, doesn't allow the luteinizing hormone enough to, it doesn't allow the release of enough uh, luteinizing hormone for the follicle stimulating hormone to be released and if that is not done you will not ovulate the body will not lay the egg all I'm trying to say here is there's a part of your brain there's a part of your brain called the pituitary gland a part of your brain called the th uh, thalamus uh, what do you call it the hypothalamus and these two hormones communicate together to produce the hormones that you need to allow you to ovulate and when you have problems with too much when there's a little confusion in the way the body is releasing the hormone then the male hormone takes over which is the testosterone and once the testosterone takes over the body is unable to produce the egg it's unable to lay the egg so we call that polystatic ovarian syndrome or PCOS and that simply means that you are ovulating you have the eggs in there but the eggs are not maturing enough for them to come out and until they are mature enough to come out you can get children and you can ovulate so that is one, one thing you can you can look at now what are the causes what are the causes of of this we are saying that when the body is producing a lot of the male hormone when the body is producing a lot of the testosterone and once the body is producing a lot of the testosterone your cycle or your menstrual cycle is going to go worse and worse each time and then it becomes a little difficult for the eggs to come out and you may have a cyst or you may have a police you may have a problem with ovulating now this is a typical example of how the whole thing looks like uh, my producer is going to show you how the whole thing looks like when we when when when, when we get there so you're going to have a picture of the pituitary gland when it is normal the way it looks like it's on your left and when it's abnormal the way it looks like it's on your right so i'm going to use my brush to show you so here you have your GnRH gonadotropin releasing hormone that is released the hormone into the pituitary gland and then everything there is normal and then you see oxygen produced and then your ovary becomes fine here and then once the eggs in the ovary are laid 
by the luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone everything becomes fine you ovulate and you can have kids but once you have PCOS what happens is after all those things have happened you have androgen produced instead of estrogen you have androgen produced and you have your eggs not being maturing enough for it to be able to hash so basically that is the reason why you may not be able to have ovulation even though uh, everything uh, in there you most times you even do the test and they tell you everything is fine but you're still not having kids good let's look at the other side of it there are other things that may cause you not to or signs that you will see that when you see these signs it shows you that there's something wrong and you critically need to take a look at now one of those signs is that when you have very high testosterone levels you are going to experience a lot of acne so you can see that your face you have a lot of pimples on your face when you have a lot of pimples on your face and on your chest it means your male hormones are very very high that's what we call in acne your head where you have a lot of acne it means your main your main levels are high and then also when your testosterone levels are extremely high you're going to have male features so you can see uh, this very popular South African athlete who is more of a man and we all know the number of times people have complained about her stature and her performance it's simply because she has a lot of testosterone which is more of a male hormone and you can see this male bodybuilder she looks very much like a male she has breasts and all the features of a woman but simply because she has a lot of testosterone she is looking like a man and then also you have here your hair will fall off you start getting male pattern baldness and this male pattern baldness is also as a result of you having a lot of male hormones and then also you start growing beard and you see some of the ladies are shaving shaving all their beard and they have hair all over their legs their chest and a lot of it is simply because they have a lot of male hormones and when you have a lot of male hormones it affects the female hormones and affects your fertility and affects the rate at which you produce estrogen testosterone estrogen and progesterone which are the two key or among the two i mean two key hormones that women need in ovulating so they can have children now this is actually not a disease it's actually a syndrome it is not a disease it's a syndrome and it can be corrected and there are several ways of dealing with this there are several hormonal uh, products that you can use when you contact me i have some products we can give you very simple products that you can use that can keep your hormones balanced and reverse this problem that you may be facing good so let's look at one other area too now i'm giving you proper diagrams of how it it works now here i am talking about when one of the causes or one of the reasons why you will not ovulate one of the reasons is that when you have insulin too much insulin or you become insulin resistant this condition would actually when you have um, this condition where the woman's insulin is not working correctly it will lead to diabetes that is why most women when they get pregnant or when they take when they become pregnant they start experiencing diabetes or some women when they age when you're growing up they don't have that condition but as they age to a, when they get to a certain age they start experiencing um, diabetes especially the type 2 diabetes it's simply because of the insulin resistance and one of the reasons is that the ovary itself is an insulin receptor the ovary is an insulin receptor so when it sees too much insulin in the body it stops ovulation it stops ovulation and this will also lead to giving those hormones that will lead to you having the PCOS yes basically that is it so I'm showing you what if the things or signs that you have 
if you have insulin resistance you become fat you will experience type 2 diabetes you will get polystatic ovarian syndromes you will have hypertension and you will age quickly and I mean you have inactive uh, hypothalamus uh, activity or hypothalamus activity it's it's, 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 it's it's amazing the way the way insulin uh, affects the woman's fertility so we need to look at that so if you are not ovulating it could also be that your insulin levels are too high and if your insulin levels are too high so long as the ovary is an insulin receptor when it sees too much insulin it will not allow the body to ovulate and it will create the same confusion in the pituitary gland and it will cause you to have polystatic ovarian syndromes great now women with this condition oftentimes about 50 percent of them will become overweight when you have uh, what do you call it uh, high levels of insulin rece receptors uh, high levels of insulin in your body you become you become overweight you would also experience like i said you experience type 2 diabetes and then also um, usually if your family has a history of diabetes you would also have it and normally um, yes if your family has history of adult diabetes you also have it and then also if older relatives of your family also experience diabetes if you're a young girl you would also experience this now another reason why you would not ovulate is when you have premature ovarian failure now this is how it looks like premature ovarian failure the picture you're seeing there on the right you have a normal ovary and on the left side no on the left you have a normal ovary and on the left you're seeing an immature of i mean ovary now it is not functioning so you're not seeing the the eggs in there and that is how it looks like now if you have immature ovarian failure immature ovarian failure it is actually the loss or the function of the ovaries so the ovaries is not functioning well especially when you are a young woman and usually it happens when you are uh, heading towards menopause but it can happen to women that are not even anywhere close to uh, menopause simply because um, of hormonal issues so if you are a woman who has premature ovarian ovarian failure if you have it it simply means that you have eggs that are less or not capable of becoming fertilized so the uh, premature ovarian failure is among the reasons why most women find it very very difficult to have children one of the reasons why they find it very very difficult to have children and then it can be diagnosed so there's no need to actually fret about it it can be diagnosed you can test once you do um you evaluate the follicle stimulating hormone you do a follicle stimulating hormone test you can tell whether you have uh, premature ovarian failure or not and then there are a lot of tests there are a lot of treatments that you can have that will be able to deal with this and i also see that there are very simpler ways of dealing with it we didn't necessarily having to go through all the complex stuff i wanted to show you a video of a doctor talking about the the problem but i think we would have to move on because we are having some little technical issues with our video so yes one other reasons why you are not going to ovulate is when you have this syndrome so when you have your what do you call it pituitary i mean it's caused by the pituitary gland i don't want to use too many of the technical terms when you have an overactive pituitary gland or you have an underactive pituitary gland so these are it if you have the hyper if you have hypo it means that you have a um, low function of the pituitary gland if you have hyper it means you have a high function of the pituitary gland and i'm telling you some of the, the things that you're going to experience so if you have a hyper it means that your thyroid you are having thyroid diseases and both and the active and overactive thyroids can cause you not to ovulate 
I'm saying that if you have your thyroid gland being overactive or underactive, it can also cause you not to ovulate. So if you look at the pictures I have here, I am stating categorically what happens when you have a when you have an overactive pituitary gland and when you have an underactive pituitary gland and then you can see uh, problems with the eyes you can see problems with the skin you can see problems with um, with weight gain problem with um, your uterus problem with your genitals and and all that so these are issues that women would actually or normally get when they have an an overactive pituitary gland or an other active and under uh, active pituitary gland and then also if you have an overactive thyroid gland or under active thyroid gland you have all these problems as well you're going to gain weight you're going to sometimes you just either gain too much weight or lose too much weight you start losing hair you become tired so so easily you start having nervousness you start having skin problems your skin color starts changing and then also these can also be diagnosed when you start experiencing these things don't be too afraid you need to seek medical care and there are several other ways of dealing with these issues and once you get the correct treatment you can always get yourself free from 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 this uh, issue all right i wanted to show you a video but i think we would have to move on now i there's another issue that we would have to consider which is also a reason for which you may not be ovulating most times when you uh when you have too much prolactin when you have too much prolactin you would also not be able to to ovulate and most times your prolactin levels goes up when you're breastfeeding so here i'm looking at when you have a hormone called prolactin and that hormone is involved with your breastfeeding and when you are actually breastfeeding the body would actually changes and will not allow you to uh what do you call it um uh, ovulate so in the same way when you have a very high level of prolactin when even you're not breastfeeding the body assumes that you are breastfeeding and will not want to ovulate so if you were a woman and you see breast milk or whitish liquid in the breast even when you are when you are not pregnant when you are not uh, when you are not breastfeeding and you see that whitish fluid in your breast it means that your prolactin levels are high and once your prolactin levels are high you will not ovulate and you it becomes very difficult for you to have children because that that case when your prolactin levels goes high is only res a reserve for women who are breast feeding and i'm showing you this prolactin production i mean chart on the screen it has a direct link with the receptors of the pituitary gland because once the baby is sucking the breast there's a direct link from the breast all the way to the pituitary gland and then there's a release of oxytocin and then there's a release of prolactin and then this actually produces the milk that the woman produces when or gives out to the baby when the baby is sucking the breast so here we are looking at what causes this problem sometimes you can get this um, hyper uh, having too much prolactin in your in your body you can get it when you have pain too much pain when you have stim uh, nip uh, nipple stimulation, when you are pregnant, when you have pelvic inflammation, when you over exercise, when you have sleep problems, and then when you also take some type of drugs can, that can also increase your prolactin level, and then also when you're having problems with your hypothalamus, with your pituitary gland, and with your thy thyroid gland, you can also get your prolactin levels shooting up to the very abnormal level so i'm saying here that there are some drugs that can push the glands to produce too much prolactin and once too much prolactin is produced you are going to experience i mean breast milk even when you're not breastfeeding breast milk when you're not pregnant breast milk when you have not given birth and once 
the body is producing too much prolactin and then you're seeing that whitest liquid in the in their breast or you're a man you are sucking your wife's breast and you feel like this there's, there's something some liquid in there it simply means that she's producing too much prolactin and it becomes difficult having babies if your body assumes you are you are breastfeeding so these are some of the manifestations of what do you call it having too much prolactin in in your body and then once prolactin may also increase with certain drugs so when you are given certain drugs when you take those drugs it will push your prolactin levels high and you need to be really careful uh watch the drugs you take especially the ones prescribed for you and normally when you when you when you are given prescription drugs it is important that you look at the side effects of those those drugs so the some of the symptoms will be you have ovulatory uh, dysfunction you you will not ovulate and then you also have menstrual troubles either you will not menstruate at all or you have very little menstruation or you have no blood coming at all or very very irregular menstruation so we need to look at that these are some of the reasons why you will virtually not ovulate at all you won't have anything ovulation happening in your in your life as a woman so some of the causes like i said will be when you are having premature ovarian failure i said so and then some of the other causes will be the reasons why you will not ovulate will be when you are heading towards menopause or in your menopause you will see that your body will stop ovulating and then like i said you also have primary ovarian failure when the ovaries are not i mean they just decide to fail and normally they are caused by chromosome problem or chromosomal problems and then you also have the secondary ovarian failure which is also uh, caused by some of the autoimmune system or autoimmune system disorders or caused by chemotherapy when you go into chemotherapy or radiation or some form of surgeries can also cause the follicle stimulating hormone to unusually increase and once they increase they will also have an effect on your estrogen levels and once your estrogen levels are affected your body will decide not to ovulate so it is something that you should also take a critical look at now some women would also not ovulate because uh, they don't have a menstrual cycle there, there's no blood nothing happens right they, they call it an ovulatory cycles often experience regular periods uh, irregular periods as um, uh, these signs would actually include like I said earlier on you have the acne on your face when you are not reg uh, ovulating regularly you should check it sometimes you see that you ovulate this month you don't ovulate the other month it simply means that one of your ovaries is not functioning and then the, if you want to check which one is functioning when you ovulate in that area you have the acne so if you are ovulating and you see pimples around your left cheek it means it's your left ovary that is functioning if you're ovulating you see the right cheek pimples or whatever it means the right cheek is the right ovary is functioning and most times when both are not functioning you don't ovulate at all you don't have your menses at all so if you have your menses this month and then it doesn't come the other one and it comes the other one it means that one of your ovaries is not is not functioning and you need to seek medical care immediately so some also will experience absence no menstruation at all or the menstrual cycle becomes very very funny very very irregular and it's also a sign that the body is not responding well and then also when you have i mean your eggs are not developing well very very low developing eggs it also affects your menstrual cycle and then it will not ovulate but here if you do an ultrasound check you'll be able to test you'll be able to find the ovary that is not functioning well and then with some hormonal top-ups hormonal uh, products to top up your hormones you will be able to to get this and then also if you're not ovulating it is normal that you're going to have abnormal bleeding levels you're going to bleed your hormones are going to really get crazy and then once you are bleeding abnormally and then uh, your hormones are crazy you can't have kids you can you can you can you can't have children and then also when you're having such issues when you do your test the normal test you don't get clear clear results 
as to whether you are ovulating or you're not ovulating it should tell you that you're having serious hormonal problems and you need to look at it now you're also going to have some pelvic problems you're going to have abnormal or lower back pain and then all these signs are signals that you are not ovulating and you should seek uh, medical care especially if you want to get pregnant so it's important that we look at this or these issues breastfeeding moms are also um, not really um, likely to have uh, their menstrual cycles or ovulating but yes there are some cases where you have uh, women who are breastfeeding ovulating those are very unusual but it happens but the real thing is it is actually natural body reaction to give birth when you give birth the body is produ producing prolactin and once it's producing prolactin you are not going to breastfeed you're not going to have uh, your menses and once you stop breastfeeding or after a period you see your body reacting to when your prolactin levels go down you see yourself ovulating and having your menses again so so long as you're having that milky stuff coming from your breast like i said earlier on it's going to be difficult for you to have your ovulation now also when you are under too much stress when you stress yourself too much you will not ovulate so you need to relax take things easy relax don't don't stress yourself too much either with job with relationship or with whatever because once you stress yourself especially those who are so so eager to have children when you stress yourself too much you may end up not being able to have the children that you are so so crying or dying to have so it's important to, you 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 check that and then also women if you really want to have children you don't have to over exercise because once you over exercise you push your male hormone testosterone up and it becomes a problem and then also if you really want to have children you have to check your weight because when you are overweight and estrogen is i mean the dominant hormone in your body it reduces your progesterone level and it affects the entire endocrine system and this this confusing in the pituitary gland and the uh, uh, thalamus gland and becomes very difficult for you to have children so it's important that you cut down with your with your exercises you really need to check your body mass index and keep it keep your right shape if you really want to have kids and then women are also uh, women have bodies that are designed um, to decrease in fertility as you age so don't be surprised as you are aging your fertility fertility levels start dipping especially when you hit 35 from 35 upwards your fertility rate actually goes down so it is it is it is enough to to eat good food to support yourself if you want to get pregnant you need to use good supplements to support yourself especially when you're 35 years and above you need some very very wonderful supplements keep your hormonal balances uh, hormone hormones balanced and then also keep yourself very healthy so you can be able to carry the baby uh, through the term as we call it so if uh, you are a woman who has low body fat or low diet uh, fat intake or you are under too much stress I'm sorry you will not ovulate I'm saying it again if you are too I mean you have your I mean, you, have, you have too low fat and then you are not your diet is bad you, you will not ovulate the body actually deals with this in a very marvelous way once the woman is not eating well the body tells the woman not to have children because you can cater for it the body doesn't see you as being able to handle that baby so if your body is too small if you are too if you are too slim too 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 lanky too skinny there's no i mean you are too small what the body assumes is you can't carry the baby so the body will not even lay the eggs for you to even get pregnant and that's the body's natural way of taking care of of things now let's look at this amazing stuff here here you're seeing that when you when you are breastfeeding these are the things that happen first of all the baby even sucking the breast or stimulating the nipple would actually um, produce a brain activity in the mother and that brain activity when produced it will stimulate the hypothalamus cells and then also release the hormone oxytocin from the receptors of the pituitary gland 
so once you are breastfeeding there's a hormone that is released and this hormone is the same hormone that bonds men men and women when they have sex and then they say they love themselves here this same hormone is that hormone that bonds the baby and the mother that is why it becomes very very difficult to separate a baby and a mother especially when they are when, when they are breastfeeding and then the nerve pulses to the hypothalamus are activated in the brain the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland also will release this oxytocin and this oxytocin will cause the cell the cells in the mother's glands to contract and thereby releasing the milk so that's how the milk is even released and the baby gets the reward with the milk and continues sucking until it's satisfied so that is that is basically what what it is so when the baby starts sucking the breast it sucks the breast so strongly that it's able to stimulate the pituitary gland and i can tell you no man can do that i know there's a research that says that when you suck the baby your, your wife's breast you prevent them from getting cancers but i tell you the way the man will suck the breast is not as strong as that of the baby because the baby really uses a lot of energy to suck the breast out uh, to suck the breast milk out and that is why these impacts is is made when you when when the baby sucks the breast so it is actually a bonding process where the oxytocin is released the oxytocin that is released goes into the breast milk the baby takes it so you can't separate the baby from the mother especially when they are breastfeeding so no matter what the baby does the mother would be around it no matter what the mother does the baby will still not shown the mother until the breastfeeding stops and that is why it becomes very very difficult when you are weaning your baby off breastfeeding is because it's just like you are giving your baby a broken heart <laughs> when you are in a relationship and the man is you are so much in love with the man and the oxytocin bond is so so high and you are trying to separate yourselves the way you feel the way you think about it so is this guy going away is this girl going away from me is the same way the baby feels when the mother tries to stop or i mean wean her off breastfeeding and it's not an easy uh, a journey or process for the babies to go through and i tell you i babies really love their moms during that that time and it takes a lot of efforts a lot of work for both mother and baby to be able to let go of the bond that uh, they have created between themselves so basically that is one of the reasons why you will not ovulate especially when you are breastfeeding and then also it is also common for marathon runners women who go on marathons they run long distances and i tell you if you run long distances it's also possible that you will not ovulate and then ladies who do their ballet dance those who do the ballet dance those i mean by high uh, those sort of stuff the ballet dancers also have problem with um uh, having having ovulations and a woman who are on death row especially when you know that you're going to be killed your mind is just disorganizes itself and your body will not necessarily produce uh, enough hormones for you to have your menstruation and the same way women who are into bodybuilding regular bodybuilding will also find it very difficult having children and then also like i said if you find yourself in very very extreme cases when you are really really stressed it can also affect you uh, your ovulation now we can also look at uh decreasing the amount of exercises if you really want to have children you have to decrease the amount of exercises you have to increase your uh, calorie especially if you have very very thin thin skin you don't have too much fat you are too masculine you need to increase your calories so that you can a little uh, have some little fat intake in uh, in you and then also if you are in stressful situations you need to deal with your stress so that you can be able to reverse that process and also i also say that if you are into taking birth control pills and personal two it's important that you abstain because then you are reprogramming the mind not to function well and once you continue to use a personal two the body will stop ovulating because the body reprograms itself and assumes that you don't want it to lay the eggs because you're always introducing a pro uh, excuse me a product that will not allow it to ovulate 
yes there are some unknown causes that would may not make you ovulate there are some unknown causes that will not make you have children but i tell you in all cases even when the causes are unknown when you are diagnosed we are able to find a way to get you uh having uh, your hormones balanced the most important thing is to have your pituitary gland and your thalamus gland functioning well and once they are functioning well and they release enough hormones for their ovaries and the uh, what do you call it for the ovaries once those hormones are released well you would always be able to have enough um, hormones balancing for you to get your children all right so let me let me uh pause here because we have gone a long way into our time and uh our phone lines have been uh displayed on the screen if you want to get interactive with us yesterday we didn't start too early but if you want to get interactive with us yes the phone line is zero five zero nine four five three nine two seven zero five zero nine four five three nine two seven you can call us you can share your views you can share your problems we can help you uh if we can help you we deal with it now if you are not having if you're having issues with giving birth you're having issues with your menstrual cycles you're having issues with ovulations there are simple ways we can deal with it when you call me my number will be on the screen after after this zero two four four six six ten eleven you can call me you can find a way out if your husband has problems with uh, low sperm count and uh it's been diagnosed as having low sperm count uh there are simple ways you can use to boost the sperm count and then there are other ways that we can also show you some basic sex positions you can use to also get um the sperm running faster and then there's one thing that women should understand you can have everything that is your everything will be all right but if the vaginal acidity is bad if you have your acidity of the vagina is bad the acidity in there can kill or may kill all the sperm that the man deposits so you also need to check the ph of the vagina once the ph is between 3.5 and 4.4 like andy sato said then you are going to have i mean be able to to uh, maintain the health of the vagina and then also with a man you need to have enough enough alkaline in your semen because the semen will then go and reduce the acidity of the vagina so that the sperm can be able to sail through so those who are having cervical erosions blockage in the fallopian tubes and all that we do all those basic things we can help you deal with with all those things so yes the phone lines are activated and uh if uh, do we have a call on the line hello yes your name and where you're calling from my name is where are you calling from from East Legon, okay. I, I, that is my hood. <laughs> All right, so let's hear you. What do you have to say? Okay, um, the last time we were speaking about, um, I don't know what I'm holding, something for me to tell you exactly what I think. I can't hear you all. If you can, I mean, retreat what you said, yeah. The other time we were speaking about, no one will be able to think. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uni egg, yes. Okay, yes, yes. It strengthens the vagina. So I wanted to find out like if you sell some or how to get it. Okay, I have some. So what you do is you call me tomorrow. You can meet me at this Legon around MJ Grand Hotel. I can get you some. Okay. Is, is, is there a number I can call on? Yeah, you call me my call my, my, my line zero two four four six six one zero one one. Okay. Zero two four four six six one zero one one. I can get you some. Okay. Thank All you right. very much. Yeah, thank you very much too for calling Akusia. All right, you have another caller on the line. Hello, caller. Hello. 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 Yeah, good evening. Your name and where you're calling from? Yeah, that is me. Okay, let's hear your name. Yeah, do ask. Yeah, Neil, let's hear you. Yeah. Okay, 
Okay. You know, there are some people who are around and they say, if you are going to be like something, I I didn't hear your question. You said what? Lower the volume. Lower the volume. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Please, when you call us, lower the volume of a TV set. Otherwise, we'll take you off. Yeah, my dear. Yes, your name and where you're calling from. I'm calling from Comet. Comet, okay. My name is Amma. Amma, okay. Let's hear you. Yes. I want to ask, for me, I have a regular message. Yeah. But what happened to that? Third day after my graduation, mm -hmm. a lot of clouds comes out of me. Okay. And the fourth day, I bleed just a little while and it's off. Okay. Yes, and I've been trying to have a baby, but mm -hmm. so it's not working. Okay. All right. So, um, you you call me. Let's talk tomorrow. Okay. Let's let's okay. find let's find a way out. Tomorrow, I have okay. I have a little um, meeting at the police station at the airport police station. Uh, those of you who remember last year, I was beating in the Medina police station, <laughs> and then uh, uh, we are, we are now dealing with it. Anyway, so um, you call me tomorrow. Let's have a chat. We we have another call on the line. Hello. Uh, hello. Thank you. All right. So you call me tomorrow. Let's talk, okay? Hello. Hello. I said uh, some people say a clue. I don't know. This a clue. It's like seventy. I'm yeah. going to say to like three people or eight people, and I have my doubt. Uh, so you I'm, say I'm you say you say what what is you say what is wrong? I'm going to say or I'm going to say to eight people. I I don't get you what you're saying. What is what are you talking about? Hello? I, I can't I, I, I don't get you what you're saying. I'm hearing four inches and eight inches. I don't get what you're talking about. Okay, we have another caller on the line. Hello, caller. Hello? Yes, hello, your name and where you're calling from. Hello? <laughs> Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Your name and where you calling from? I'm calling from Kumasi. Kumasi. Okay. Okay. Let's hear you. Like my my nerves will come continuous two weeks and like no stop. For two weeks. Yes. How old are you? I'm twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. Uh, it's a hormonal problem, so please see, it. see it. I mean, have you seen any gynae? No. Please do, okay? okay. See a gynae near you. It's, it's, this is a, uh, it's a hormonal problem, so see it. Because you can't you can bleed for two weeks. Uh, that means you're bleeding throughout the follicle phase. Yeah, uh, Alright, so you, you... You, yes, yes, you, you, yes. I mean, see, see a gynae, okay? See a gynae close to you. Let's let's um, do a check and then find out what the problem is. All right, thank you for calling. Yeah, hello, caller. Hello. Yes, hello. hello. Yes. Uh, yeah. My my question is that uh, I said can a thing of quality can be a selfie which or a twenty should be possible that a thing of quality can be a twenty two or a twenty. You got people saying from my dream. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to understand what you're saying. Are you saying that? Are you saying that? Can I, are you saying that uh, somebody is saying that a penis of four inches can be increased to eight inches? Is that what you're saying? Okay, yes. I mean, the penis can be enlarged, but it cannot be enlarged double the size. So, four to eight inches, that's something I doubt. Because if... I don't know any drug that does that, but I know that there are natural ways. I have natural ways that you can use in, in getting at least an inch and a half. But four inches is crazy. Yes, hello. Your name and where you're calling from? Hello. 
Uh, your name, lower the volume for TV set, okay, please. Hello? Hello? Yes, your name and where you're calling from? Hello? Your name and where you're calling from? I'm rich, I'm calling from Madina. Where, where are you calling from? Madina. Madina, okay, let's hear you. Yes, you are calling your personal number. Uh huh. Take your time because what is the number after I'm reaching? My personal number is 0244 661011. Yes, sir. Excuse me. It will be on the screen again. Don't worry. 0244 661011. 0244661011 to be on the screen again, definitely. So keep watching, okay? All right. Hello? Yeah, your name and where you're calling from? Yeah, my name is Sam. Sam. Otano, okay, let's hear you. Okay, let's hear you. Sam, let's hear you. Hello? Yeah, let me hear you, your questions. Mm, I have two questions to ask. Okay. And um, the first question is, does abortion have side effects from error on future pregnancy? And then, and then second, um, can a man who used to, who used not to have a no spend count, future will have um, uh, some kind of use count? Yes, yes to all of them. Okay. Great. Now, if you want to know the effects of abortion, go to my YouTube channel, Papa Kwamna, Mr. Smooth. I have some videos there you can watch. Is abortion murder and is abortion risky? You can find out there. And then uh, with the low sperm count thing, I'm going to do a, a typical class here on um, low sperm count, what it is, what it actually means, what what it means when you see somebody has low sperm count. We're going to treat all that. So keep watching adult class on GNTV every Wednesday from 10 to 11.30 and then they repeat on Saturdays at 11 to 12.30. All right, so we have another call on the line. Hello. Hello. Yes, your name and where you're calling from. Yes, your name and where you're uh, I'm Kofi. You're from Pram Pram. You're calling from Pram Pram. Pram Pram. Let's hear you, Kofi. Yeah. Yeah, Kofi. Uh, let's hear you. Uh, uh, oh. Lower the volume of a TV set before you call. Because if you don't lower the volume of a TV set, we can't hear you. And uh, once your TV set is on, you're listening to us from the TV, you'll be removed from it because then you'll be creating confusion here. Yeah, hello, caller. Hello. 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 It is right there on the screen that lower the volume for TV set and people still can't. I don't do it. Yes, your name and where you're calling from? I'm calling from Kumasi. Kumasi, okay, let's hear you. You are what? What's your name? Amiya. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's hear you. Yeah, what do you have to say? I think. Yeah, hello, Colin. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Your name and where you calling from? I'm calling from Amiya. Okay, let's hear you. Let's hear you. Hello? Yes, yes, we are listening to you. Hi. Uh, I'm, I'm having this, this, uh, discharge. You're having discharge? Yes. What what type of discharge? Yes. What type of discharge? I have a discharge. Okay, you you call me tomorrow. Let's let's let let let's, let's probe a little and then find what it is. Okay, and then if there's a solution for you, we can give you. All right. So this one says, "I am, I am gifty and I'm always hot. I don't have appetite for food. I also have heavy flow during my mens. I'm asking whether it's a cause of an inability to conceive. Yes, being hot temperature is a part of it." 
and then uh, heavy flows is a part of it so you need to check it they are all hormonal issues so yeah give team uh, call me tomorrow uh, god willing let's have a chat all right so let me do the next messages okay um all right i am um, no, no i won't read this one good evening please i am um abna dan uh Datsun, a lady of 46 years and i do bleed during sex okay please what cause what's what caused there or what is the cause that's what you want to say all right so um abna Datsun, let's talk um having sex during bleeding we need to look at it whether the man is either you are too dry or and then heading for the sex also means you're getting close to your menopausal age and this is also hormonal we can we can have we can have a look at it so um my number is on the screen you can pick my number you can call me tomorrow so we we look at it okay good good evening i'm enjoying your program very much please um you should come down to our tree please <laughs> I said I was going to do that, but oh, and Emre no, and yeah, starting to meet. We would we will look at that um, probably next week. I will try and have a blend of uh, my booking English and Chi as well. Okay. Hello, I want to know what to do if my testosterone is low, or okay. These are hormones, and I don't know whether you were a male or a female. So, if your testosterone are low and then you were a male, it's a problem. If your testosterone are low, uh, low, and then you are a guy, it's normal. So let's let's have a look at it. Um, give me a call. Let me know whether you were a guy or a girl. Hello. Okay, that's that's all you sent. Uh, hi. Okay. Um, let's um, tons of messages. Many many messages. Now let me go to the regular text as well. There are thousands, I mean lots of them here. Um, uh, hello, my name is um, Gifty. I am calling from, I'm sending this message. Okay, you are saying you are calling, but it's actually a test. Then someone, I, I have my message two times in a month. What is the cost? Okay, I am going to treat that here on the adults class. So keep watching, keep watching. Okay, I am Kwame. I always see white, starchy fluids every uh, very early when even I see a woman's nakedness. Okay, this is a. I don't think it's a, it's a problem. It's, it's going to be a, a, what do you call it? A pre ejaculatory pre fluids from the prostate. Unless, of course, it, is, uh, it has a scent or something, but minus that. I mean, no problem normally when you when you have a an erection you have this fluid that is supposed to reduce the acidity of the vagina all right so i think i have um i'll live my time yes uh, we didn't start early but i i think i should run out of here so but next week stick and stay with the show it's always going to be one very wonderful lesson after the other you had a wonderful lesson from auntie Sato's place and the Satos Corner where you will learn how to handle and treat and keep your vaginas and then here also on in Mr. Smooth's classroom we learned the signs that you are not ovulating and then once you're not ovulating you've seen all the various things that will cause you not to ovulate we learned that it can come from the pituitary gland from the thalamus gland and then also when you have your hormones not being re regularized or when you have one of your ovaries not functioning properly then these things once you put them all together if you really want to have children then there are ways to get your hormones balanced get your endocrine system balanced and then you can be able to have kids so like i said if you are unable to have children and you really want them my number is 0244661011 if you have a husband who has low sperm count and really wants help there are other things that we can do there are other doctors we can we can recommend and then we are also waiting for these companies to come sponsor us so we can openly come out and mention their names but yes we still want to help people so we can talk about them so here we'll end the class for today and i would want to thank everybody who made this show possible i want to thank auntie Seto. i want to thank my family for allowing me to be here to teach these things at the expense of being with them i want to thank my team in Emery ghana the redwood family i won't forget any of 
the members of the Emery team and then also I won't forget the production team uh, Mustafa thank you very much even though we had issues today I'm not fighting you uh, Abner Dubai, Kwesi Do, uh, Mr. Eugene, um, Mr. Richmond Kilsing thank you very much for allowing uh, adult class to come on GNTV and the entire GNTV team we say thank you very much for allowing this education to come on stick and stay with us there is more to come if you want any of the videos we have done for this past year just get to my youtube channel papa kwamna mr smooth and then you can find some of these videos very educative videos there and i'm sure after watching this show you know that it is currently the most educative adult show in this country and the whole of africa but next week is going to be another wonderful session i'll be looking at why you have your menses two times in a month the reasons and how you can stop that that's me mr smooth is my name see you next week for another wonderful lesson bye bye